Stinton. I was born in 1938 in County Mayo in Westport, a lovely 18th century planned town at the, the edge of Clue Bay with uh, Kirkpatrick a few miles further along the coast, an ideal environment in which to grow up. And I attended the Christian Brothers schools locally uh, for my primary and secondary education. Um, and I recall one day uh, a brother telling us about the go Irish golden age of monasticism, the era of uh, the Book of Kells and so on. And my soul was filled with a sudden spiritual joy and wonder at that way of life of prayer and, and study and creativity. But the, the vision passed and uh, ambition for a very successful worldly career took over. However, one day in leaving Surat, I had an strange experience. Suddenly, um, I was stopped in my tracks almost physically by an awareness that life is short and eternity is long. Perhaps, perhaps not very happily put philosophically. I wasn't sure what to do, but what I did was something very strange and I'd never thought of it before. Uh, I offered my services to the local church, the diocese, uh, as a diocesan priest. However, I was politely uh, turned down uh, because I hadn't gone to the diocesan college. Uh, in fact, I had chosen not to go there. But as I was leaving the presbytery, the, the curate said, there is a place called Clonliffe College, the Dublin Diocesan Seminary. They'll take anyone. There I went. And after studies in science and philosophy in UCD uh, and theology uh, in a very conservative university in Rome, I ended up a priest of Dublin Diocese for some 23 years. But I didn't really settle, and a sign of that was that I became overactive, really. Uh, for example, I, I started a cooperative housing society uh, because my youth leaders in the parish really wanted to get married and had put themselves on the, the housing list, which like now was quite long and difficult. But through this housing cooperative, they became uh, house builders themselves. They built their own houses very successfully. In my next parish, I therefore thought of trying to do something similar, but the archbishop asked me in a phone call late one night to go to the new leaf founded Irish School of Ecumenics. I had never heard of it. But I went there and that changed my life forever because I was exposed to new theological thinking, very exciting thinking, and to inter-church activities, uh, such for example as nurturing uh, the newly founded Irish uh, Inter-Church Families Association it was a very creative, exciting time. I was to serve in two parishes after that. In the first, I was trying to work out what we might do to respond to the Pope's visit the previous year. But one evening I was uh, talking to the parish youth leader as he sat on his bike outside the presbytery, and they thought, suddenly came to me that perhaps we could make a return visit to the Pope on bicycles, which is what we did. 34 riders, uh, six of um, backup crew, uh, some of us adults, but mostly teenagers. But while we were preparing for this trip, I had something of a shock. One morning I, in my post, I discovered that I was transferred at six days notice to a new parish. 
one I'd never heard of. And it was a new, newly founded parish with a newly created parish priest. But he turned out to be the most wonderful man, so generous so and so happy to allow me to continue with the, the project from the previous parish. But I was uh, at that time really in a period of discernment as to what I want to do with my life. However, being suddenly assigned to a new parish meant everything had to be postponed. So uh, the very generous and very active BP and I had to get on with it. And as I was thinking about uh, what I might contribute in the way of fundraising, um, I thought of a cycling pilgrimage, not surprisingly, but this time to Jerusalem. Uh, for me, though, that was a period when, in the hardships of that cycle of five weeks long, um, it gave me a chance to, to think about what I wanted to do. And the answer seemed to come, and within a couple of years, I uh, entered Denstall. So in Denstall, over the first years, I was engaged in different jobs, and then unexpectedly, got an invitation from Sant'Anselmo, our headquarters in Rome, to do some teaching and administrative work there. And there, after six years or so, I was recalled to Glenstall to become the, the novice master. Um, during my time in, in Rome, I had been appointed to the International Pentecostal Roman Catholic Dialogue. And I continued to attend annual meetings in various other unexciting international venues. Also, at, during that time, uh, I had a very pleasant interlude of three weeks teaching uh, each year, of teaching and nurturing or mentoring, I should say, uh, students for the Baptist ministry at Beeson Divinity School in Sanford University, in the heart of um, Baptist country, Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, but that was a very happy time, and it all came about because the dean uh, I had come to know and very much like uh, when he visited Rome some years before, an extraordinarily scholarly and uh, ecumenically minded and devout man. Back in Denstall in 2007, uh, I started a small chocolate company to add to our products in the uh, shop where I worked. A niche range of products using uh, traditional monastic liqueurs as flavoring for chocolates, the great ones like Chartreuse and Benedictine, but it remains a, a small operation. But now as I went for my 70s into my 80s, I had more time really to think and uh, study and add to my modest output of articles for various journals. And it led uh, in 2017 to uh, my producing a book on Luther for the 500th anniversary of the Reformation, October um, 2017. Um, and that work led me to think of a material that I had pondered in that book, but I might continue to work on it, uh, principally the uh, practice of fasting, which had relatively disappeared from the church, having been such an important issue in the 15, 1500s, in the time of the Reformation. But that project morphed into the more substantial one of, um, and perhaps more light-hearted one, on food, feast, and fasting, which I published earlier this year. And I continue now to work on more interesting theological themes, which are themes which I may never complete. But uh, overall, I have to say that um, now I feel that my aspiration, which was there at a very deep level to monastic life as a teenager uh, has been realized 
and I'm very grateful to God for that.